Hi, my name is Jay Kalari, the executive chef at Salt Fish House. We're here at a sister restaurant campground. Um, I've been the executive chef there for about two years now. Started there four years ago, worked my way up. So today I'm going to show you how to do a very simple grilled oyster recipe. We're just going to do a little butter with a little chive, horseradish, bacon, and a little parmesan and breadcrumb topped with a little bit of fennel fronds. Uh, that'll be just to garnish at the end. And then we'll also finish with a little zest of lemon. So to shuck oysters, you can do it a couple ways. You can just throw it on to a hot grill and wait for it to pop open. Or you can um, shuck it at the restaurant. We like to shuck it to order. It just takes a little bit longer for the, them to pop naturally with the heat off the grill. Um, so what we do is we take a towel and just kind of fold it over about halfway, maybe three quarters of the oyster. Take a nice oyster knife, curved tip, works really well. So you kind of hinge that under the uh, bell here. And just you're just using the, it's not so much force that is, as it is leverage. And then you just scrape this little muscle off the top. You can discard the top shell. Um, then you grab it in your hand Scrape. There's also another muscle underneath. And go ahead and flip that. So they're very briny Pacific oysters. Really nice. So there's the oyster shucked. You can get any debris. They tend to be not too dirty, but sometimes they'll have an extra shell that's forming a layer on top of the existing shell. So you can discard that or else it might get stuck in your mouth or you know you can just get rid of it so you can just pull the towel with your knife get it hinged right under there and the more you do it it's one of those things it's muscle memory but you're kind of doing a this motion less of a prying so it pops open nice and easily just get that muscle disconnected from the top shell and there are little bits of shell that are forming and then just take your knife run it along the bottom of the shell nice scooping motion and then with the back side of your knife flip it so it presents really nicely discard the shell I like really simple ingredients and really simple, especially with oysters. You're just using kind of the freshest stuff you can get. I feel like the oysters really need some acidity and that uh, kind of bite that this horseradish has. It's really nice against the brininess. And also you get that texture from the breadcrumbs with a little bit of Parmesan in them. Um, makes it really nice. So now that our oysters are shucked, we can go ahead and make our butter. Our butter is softened. It's unsalted butter. We'll use that. Uh, we'll salt it to taste if needed. Uh, your bacon's super salty, so you're going to want to be tasting along the way. Um, so we can start with our horseradish. Just You don't need too much of it. Huh? Just a little, maybe half a teaspoon for about half a cup of butter. Just mix with a fork. You don't need too much. And then for the bacon again, just a nice maybe half teaspoon, depending. And you can adjust this however you want it. If you like bacon, if you don't like bacon at all, if you don't eat meat, you can just opt to do it without it. Still, very good sauce to put on oysters. Fresh chives. I like to start with a very even cut on the end, so that you're getting nice even cuts. You don't need too much of this. I prefer a nice freshness that the chives bring to it and that oniony flavor. So I prefer a lot of chives. 
We'll also do a little bit of lemon juice just to help that oyster with the acid content. And I just strain through the hands. Maybe the juice of half a lemon for a cup of butter. And we'll use this at the end to garnish with uh, the peel. We'll shave that across the top. And that'll help with the aromatics as well as the flavor. So there's that, and then you can adjust the seasoning as you need it. So now we'll get some of these on and cook them. So maybe a tablespoon per oyster I do, and you can, again, you can just adjust that how you like it. If you want it just that more classic oyster flavor, you can leave mostly brine and just a little bit of butter. Or if you're not too keen on oysters and you just prefer the butter, you can kind of keep it like that. So I'm just gonna place them back here on the hottest part of the grill. And then we're just waiting for them, for the butter to melt, but also them to firm up a little bit and to cook fully. You don't wanna go in and do an oyster and have the butter be boiling hot, but your oyster itself cold. So you wanna make sure you're getting an even heat throughout that whole process. So you can kind of tell when these are done by just kind of poking them. If they bounce back, um, similar to a steak, if you still feel a steak and your finger kind of goes into it, that means it's it's still cooking. It's got a way this would go. Um, if it's nice and firm, you know, it's, it's cooking and it's setting up nicely. So now that the oysters have firmed up a little bit more and the butter's all melted, I can go on with my Parmesan breadcrumbs. It's just... You can use fresh bread, you can use stale bread. Either way will really work. We've already toasted the breadcrumbs, so all we're looking for is that cheese to melt a little bit. So you get a little bit of that uh, texture as well as the creaminess that helps the, uh, plays off rather, creaminess that's already in the oyster itself. So we're just waiting for that cheese to kind of melt a little bit. It shouldn't take too long. Your butter's all melted. Um, at this point, you're ready to go. So rather than going from the grill all the way over here to the plate. I like to take the plate with me to the grill. And there's your very buttery horseradish and chive oyster with bacon, Parmesan breadcrumbs. And then to finish, I'll just take a couple sprigs of fennel frond. So it's just the tops of the fennel. And you can just kind of place those for presentation and for flavor. A really nice anise um, bits, and they look really pretty as well, nice and delicate. And then one more A little garnish I like to do is nice lemon peel shavings. So that about does it for that. Nice, simple, really fresh, but also really rich with the butter, but everything kind of cuts together. Thanks for joining me while I prepared this oyster, and I hope you guys enjoy your oyster fest from the safety of your homes. Uh, yeah, enjoy.